This is a bottle flipping Lego robot, which means it throws the exact same way every single time. I have no hand-eye coordination and I'm a loser when it comes to sports. So after years of bottle flipping for fun, I decided to become a smart winner through the power of technology. This robot, 100% success rate. <laughs> so let's be honest, robots are just better than us. They work for no pay, they have no family commitments, and they are just more precise than us. I bet a trick shot robot could rival a professional. That's why I'm going to apply these traits to bottle flipping for a success rate us normal people could only dream of. Come on, she looking cute. I'll also be trying my hand or robot hand at an actual showdown with That's Amazing. The oldest brother once landed 3,000 bottle flips in a row, but for the sake of time, we'll be playing for speed rather than streaks. This collab was kind of a random idea, but it turned out to be super fun. This might just be the star of the whole show. Bottle flipping takes skill, for now at least. Not only for the athletes, but anyone even trying to make one of these things. The big challenge for this robot is generating enough force to 360 a 500 milliliter bottle. Obviously, I'm not the first LEGO fan to try this, but I would be the first to pull it off. Everyone else on YouTube used bottles three quarters or even just half the normal size. Otherwise, the robot would lose hold of the bottle too easily. That's not only a matter of volume, so let me break the fourth wall for a second. If you've ever held a long pole before, you'll find it relatively easy to hold it in the middle, but a lot harder to hold it from an extreme end. And that's because you'd be further away from the center of mass. The same struggle exists with a Lego gripper holding a bottle sideways. Not only would a large bottle weigh more than a smaller one if both were filled to 25% capacity, but the distance between the large bottle's cap and center of mass would be greater too. A solution to this whole conundrum could be having the robot just hold the bottle from the bottom, but that would kind of feel like a compromise. So here's what we need to make. A rig to hold the bottle up, a swinging beam to rotate the bottle, a gripper to release it, and a program to perfectly synchronize the motors. Now I did say we because my buddy Obi vowed to handle most most of the trial and error. That meant I could spend more time making my next fast food machine. Do I regret embarking on a machine that's over a hundred studs wide? Yeah. <laughs> Task one was the least of our worries, so we stacked dozens of 2x4 bricks for the prototype. Then we installed a motor on each side to suspend the gripper motor in the middle. One thing the other bottle flip robots taught me is to first pull the bottle backwards as to get a running start, then have the gripper open while it's swinging. We made sure there was a good distance kept between the back wall and motors, and then the easy parts were over. Figuring out the optimal gripper was a total time sink. For eight weeks, Obi and I tried everything. Worm gears, the gripper took too long to open. Elastic bands, the gripper was too hard to open. A symmetrical gripper, the bottle didn't spin enough. A purely mechanical gripper, that didn't work at all. Let me tell you, my prayer life during this time was at an all time high because the only way I was getting through this is if I received a message from but I guess a message from Moby works too. So we discovered a gripper with one moving claw is better than two. I'm assuming that's because the bottle can push off of this stationary back claw a little bit longer, giving it the necessary oomph to complete a rotation. But that was still kind of lucky because all programming up to that point was guesswork. So while Obi spent a final week perfecting the code and reconstructing the model in 3D software, I finished making my first food automation machine to come with instructions so you can make it at home. I've received so many emails over the years asking to buy one of my machines, so I made super sure this one was frustration free. You can check out the first link in the description or wait till the end of the video to learn more. And in the nick of time, Obi threw the ball back into my court. So the simplest way to describe my goal is to take the motors that are going to be elevated in the air and elevate them in a very artistic fashion. Doesn't look like a robot arm much at all, right? This looks more like the whale from a certain clothing brand. Uh, so I'm gonna try Technic pieces. I'm hoping that's not the solution. Come on now, that is the answer. That is gorgeous. 100% sticking with that. Yes. Yes. 
man, this looks so good. If the second link looks this good or like the second kinked angle, imagine the third one. Okay, now it is really taking shape. This is like a fat cell phone, but so much cooler. So now we're gonna take the robot arm and click it into these pegs. Now it's time to finally put on all of the decorative panels. Moment of truth. Okay, no. If we're going for precision, that's not what we want. But after... <gasps> Yo, good. Yes, yes, it's working, it's working. Woo, let's go, that's what I'm talking about, man. This actually looks amazing. This is better than anything I would have designed. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> First try. Landed like it meant it. Nice. So we're in good hands. This this is a worthy robot of competition. Yeah, it would have been a very inefficient robot. I'm glad for robots exist. With my teammates' approval, of course I had to share it with others. Sam, what's going on? Not much. Daniel, what's good? Hey. Hey, Danny, how's it going? Hi, Marissa, I'm good. Oh, that's sick. Bro. There we go. Whoa. That is very accurate. I think it's much better than me. Have you ever practiced something and felt good about it only for it to go terribly on presentation day? Somehow that's the exact opposite of what happened to me. I'm playing with some people who already bought the pudding machine instructions as a courtesy to them, but also to see how superior the robot is to normies like you and I. Welcome, Welcome back, back to Brick Science. Science. Three, two, one, now. I gotta get my bottle flipping game on you. Stop. I can definitely say the robot flipped more than that, so I'm glad to see that this robot is in good standing. Okay. <laughs> I lost. From time to time, the robot misses the landing. So does that mean the robot's bad? Not really. So in 2017, KUKA Robotics actually tried bottle flipping with one of their robot arms. And for those of you who know of KUKA, you know they're a serious company. So it should come as a surprise to you that even they missed five to 10% of the bottle flips. That's why the final showdown will compare who can land the most bottle flips in a minute blindfolded. The robot can make up for misses by flipping faster. And the reason this will be done blindfolded is because after all, this is a competition between muscle memory and robotic precision. So a professional bottle flipper will be hardly disadvantaged. So I whipped up an email, bottle flipped it into their inbox, and after a bit of talking, we finally scheduled a virtual meeting. Leading up to that day, each of us videotaped our attempt to share on the call, because while competing live sounds sensational, I wanted to capture a performance we could all be proud of, instead of the athlete missing a few more bottle flips than they would have hoped, or the robot potentially bugging out. So I emptied my memory card, hit record, and started a timer, because my best attempt would take a while. Okay. Okay. That's the one. That's amazing. It's going to be here any minute. Woo! Oh, Toby. Okay. Oh, he's good too. It's time. They're here. They're here, dude. They're here. Are you ready for this? I'm gonna admit them. Three, two, one. How's it going, guys? Hello. So what did you major in? I majored in robotics. Me too. What is that? Was that fun? Uh, hey, Dad. Um, it's Marcel. Uh, no, I I know. I just sound like a freaking repetitive video saying, "Oh, it's hard. I don't want to do it." Um, but I really haven't felt anxiety this bad ever in my life. My master's program in Northwestern was phenomenal. So yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of pain, but it was worth it. So I'm thinking you guys can just present your screen and we'll watch the video or videos together and then we'll do the same from our end. All right, here we go. 
Okay, Marcel, your robot is pretty cool, but I don't know if it can be five years of muscle memory experience. Are you ready to go, Matt? Let's do it. I'm not as good as Tommy, but we'll see what I get. Mask over the eyes, love it. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I love how Obi hasn't seen much of their videos, and boy does it show. <laughs> but then even Tommy's a bit surprised. Then Tommy and I are officially amazed. And then Obi glances to my webcam to see that, yeah, this is not normal. Then our amusement turns to concern. And this is the moment Tommy's face says it all. Absolutely superhuman performance. I think the Guinness World Record is 37, right? Yeah. The first one? The World Record is 37. But we haven't tried this really before, so... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to what Tommy gets. Go! This time, you can see Obi's no longer impressed. Seen that. Been there. You are very fast. Okay. No pressure, but you are on world record pace right now. I think. Well, Obi's back in a state of disbelief. And honestly, same. <laughs> you have not missed this whole time. 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Oh, what oh. was that? What was that? <laughs> so you guys both beat the world record. Yeah, we we ended up getting 38 each. We'll see if we beat the robot. Yeah, let's see how the robot did. Wow, it's really impressive still. Thank that you. That's cool. Yeah, how does it even flip it? Like, yeah, that's wild. Oh, yeah, it flips it so far away. Like, that's hard to land a flip. Like, Close actually had a lower success rate. Oh, really? We noticed when I was doing mine, I threw mine farther than Matthew did. And, but I don't know like why, just I guess how we do it. Oof, rats, I messed that one up. Mm. I still can't believe how you don't even have to press a button for it to go. Okay. That was a grand total of 11. I'm glad to have joined the double digit club though on the bright side. Yeah, um, yeah. Both humans have not only beaten the Guinness World Record, but have also <laughs> beaten the robot. So congratulations guys. Thank you. That robot title, I'm very impressed. It is very impressive. If you lose to a professional, then did you really lose at all? I'm relieved to see Tommy and Matthew are just as impressive in real life as they are on their YouTube channel, because I would not want to be responsible for dethroning a professional or two. I guess I'll just stick to fast food machines. For those of you wanting to buy one of my big machines, well, 
now you can. This is a cookies and cream pudding machine where if you insert one quarter or coin of similar diameter, the machine unlocks to dispense the perfect ratio of milk to pudding powder. Then there's a mixing station and even a system to drop exactly one cookie atop your dessert. You haven't seen this machine before because it was exclusively made to be user friendly. That means one, the mechanism is the smoothest that I have ever made to the point where the three people I had build this machine have not given me a single complaint to this day. Two, it works with multiple currencies, including some of which are shown here. And if a coin is smaller than this range, it's simply returned to the customer through coin rejection. And three, the non-LEGO elements are easily accessible no matter where you live. Seriously, this cup is just half of a water bottle. And if you really want, you can make pudding powder from scratch at home. And what happens if you spill that cup everywhere? Will you risk electrocution? Nope, this machine uses no electronics, meaning even if you make a mess, there is no crying over spilled milk, literally. Because it's pure mechanics, you'll be learning to apply every single mechanical engineering technique applied in an Astonishing Studios video from pneumatics to speed versus torque to conveyor belts and beyond. And you'll also see how to make a machine look as appetizing as its products. So if you're looking for an excuse to have your own machine after years of seeing other people make them online, or if you're a Lego builder looking to level up, or if you take engineering so seriously that you would gladly hook your son or daughter up with a vending machine made of Lego bricks, then this is for you. Just go to Majorstem.com or click the link in the video description to check it out and start building this cookies and cream pudding machine today. They landed like almost every single one. Yeah, what the heck? I was like, okay, they're gonna get like 75%. No, it was like 90 something for each of them. Yeah.